let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are making the Midnight Kiss Pouch from Sincerely Jen Patterns. This is such a cute, simple, little bag. So quick to make, so easy. Very little hardware, literally none. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy. This is a free pattern if you are in her Facebook group, so I will link that down below. I have these scraps of fabric that I was gonna throw away, but are absolutely perfect for this zipper pouch. So what I'm gonna be doing is cutting out my inner facing. I think this is Pixie Fuse Plus, I don't know, I found it in my inner facing bin and I was like, well, that feels right. Because what Jen uses, I believe, is the Pixie Fuse Plus. Um, so you can see it's got this really shiny glue side and it's a nice um, medium weight interfacing, medium to heavy, honestly. Um, but it doesn't have quite as much stiffness as uh, Sofuse Plus does. But I think Sofuse Plus could also be used. Honestly, anything you have on hand for a pouch this small really isn't going to matter. So I'm going to just cut this out. I am cutting out my inner facing first, just so I can kind of better fussy cut the print. So there is one piece. I have my heat press warming up. I always like to start it while I'm cutting out my interfacing so that way when I'm done cutting out interfacing, the heat press is ready. I'm not sure that I really need to interface my zipper tabs. I'm worried it might be a bit too much and it does say to just cut your exterior fabric, no interfacing. so. My intuition is correct. You could also use little scraps of vinyl for your zipper tabs, and you could even cut them a little bit smaller in that case. got my exterior interfacing cut and ready to go. This is a pattern that would be great for batch sewing. If you've got um, like a craft show coming up or classroom gifts to give, teacher gifts to give, like there's, I don't think there's anybody that's gonna be like, you know what, I actually don't need a little zipper pouch. I'm going to really quick cut out my zipper tabs from this little area here. They're a little bit shorter than they need to be, but that's okay because the zipper tabs are made longer to account for one and a half or for um, number five zipper tape or number three zipper tape do those and I'm just waiting for my heat press to warm up okay so we've got that fully fused and now I'll just cut these out
am now cutting out my interfacing and instead of using my pattern piece, I'm just using the exterior piece because it's, it'll work. I find this to be quicker for me anyway. I am using a water resistant canvas for the lining. I do like to make sure that I put right sides together so that the pattern pieces are the same size like when they're facing each other. Just cutting out those little corners. So that is literally it for cutting and interfacing. If you wanted to add um, a little D-ring to this, you absolutely could. Just cut out another little zipper tab piece and use a um, half inch D-ring or what have you. If you use the pop tab zipper pulls that I sell on my website, they do allow for a snap hook to go through that opening. So you could just use um, a big enough zipper pull to attach a D-ring. I think I'm actually going to use a number three zipper tape just because I have number three zipper pulls and I want to play with them. I'm going to be cutting my zipper to six and a half inches. So I'm measuring at the edge of my table from one end to the other. The zipper tape that I'm using is from geekyhardware.com because I don't currently have any number three, but we do have some ordered for, um, I believe, February, we're hoping. And you can see here, there are some wrinkles in this zipper tape. It's a little bit thinner than I normally go for um, as far as the zipper tape itself. Um, but I'm going to iron it so that we don't have those wrinkles in our project. And so when I'm ironing zipper tape, I always like to make sure I have plenty of water in the iron and use a fair amount of steam. And you can see it looks way better. You want to make sure you don't iron um, plastic zipper tape, but nylon is usually safe. So it looks way better. And then we can add our little number three zipper pull. All right, so we're going to start with our zipper tabs. You can use double-sided tape for this if you want. I'm going to fold the edges in and then enclose the edge of our zipper tape and sew that into place. And repeat that on the other side. Oh, I might have folded it wrong. Oh well. <laughs> Is our zipper. Oh my goodness. Number three zipper tape is so tiny. It's so cute. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna use one of my woven labels. Not a woven label, but these are cork tags from the Heartwood and Hide. This will be super fun. So I just fold it to find the center, grab a little piece of double-sided tape, I think I'm gonna put it on this side. There's a nice little area right, oh, right here where there is nothing. So I'm just gonna fold this in half. I kinda wanna find the centers anyway so that when I'm attaching my zipper, it's even, but this will be quicker. You wanna make sure you're not placing it too low. Keep in mind that this is a boxed bottom. So if you place it down here, it's past 
the cutout. So you want to place it up a little bit higher. And we'll sew that into place. zipper. So again, I want to center that. Mark my center of this zipper. Now I don't want to snip through the zipper tape because I could risk it fraying. So I'm just using the silver marking pencil within the seam allowance. To line up the center and I want to make sure that my zipper tabs are nowhere near the seam allowance otherwise I'll have issues sewing this all together um, and because the zipper is so small I'm going to baste it in place first um, I could use double-sided tape but I just am not going to right now The twill tape of number three zipper tape is not as wide as number five, I believe. So you have to be careful with that. Um, the wrong side of the water resistant canvas develops these like white lines from creasing. So that's how I know that is the wrong side. So then I'm going to flip this over and sew down a little bit further. And now when top stitching, I do not like to sew through the lining because it adds bulk to the side seams. So if you feel like you need to sew through the lining, I would recommend stitching from zipper tab to zipper tab and leaving that little bit open. But if you like the look from end to end, I recommend just folding your lining up and top stitching through your exterior and that zipper seam. And then make sure you iron your lining down. I'm thinking honestly if you wanted to like top stitch again over the just the zipper tab that way it looks like it's all top stitched but really your lining is caught only within this area technically you could try that um, because one issue you might have um, this happened in the peekaboo class is if the distance between your zipper tape and your exterior fabric isn't quite right, you could risk catching your lining when you're zipping your zipper up. So that's the main reason you would want to sew through the lining fabric. So now we're just going to line up our centers on the other side. Clip that in place. me if I didn't throw it on the ground.
Somebody say Skillshare. Okay. So top stitch the other side, folding those seams down, making sure they're pressed nicely and out of the way of our zipper. <clears throat> and then we'll fold right sides together. I always like to use a stronger clip at the zipper. Matching those up. And then I use these lighter weight clips around the bag because we don't need as strong of a hold. And then I'm gonna switch my stitch length down to probably like a 4.5. And I'm gonna use Nicole from Sonar's method of walking into the lining. And I'm using a pretty small seam allowance just because it's such a small bag and I don't want to get near that zipper tab. And honestly, I don't wanna to have to trim down my seam allowance. So that's what we're doing. And then instead of lifting my foot up, I'm just bringing the other corner together. And then as I get close to the end of this area, I'm going to walk out of the lining. And all that really does is kind of hide any stitches that you might see. I am trimming down the seam allowance just at the zipper area where my zipper tabs are. It's going to create a lot less bulk at that seam. Um, you just wanna make sure you don't get too close to your stitches like I kind of did right there. And then we're gonna square the bottom corners. Probably should have started by unzipping my zipper. If you didn't, you can reach with your thumb and pull on the zipper head. And then I think when I was watching um, Jen's video on this bag, she nests her seams, which is where you just push them in opposite directions. Um, so especially when seams are this small, the seam allowance is so tiny, it's, it's not easy to open it up. <laughs> there went the bottom. And I'm just using um, scrap bobbins, more or less. I like to call it a little bobbin dump. On these little pouches, no one's ever gonna notice you had two different colors, so. to turn the bag. So I'm just gonna grab the bottom. This is a very easy pouch to make, would be perfect for industrial or not industrial domestic machines um it would be great for a beginner if you're trying to teach um someone younger in your life to sew or even older and you've never sewn before and then just to give you like a close-up of what it looks like 
when you walk into the seam. Normally you can kind of see your stitches loosely in that area as we've pulled it, but because you walk in, it creates more of a hidden stitch. And then I'll just sew along that opening. Um, I'll go ahead and add one of these labels. It says you look really pretty today. push the corners of the bag in, push out where your zipper tabs are, and there is your little zipper pouch. Give it a nice press. So this is just a perfect little size bag. 